Well, tremendous welcome for the Celtic team as they take the field. Beautiful playing surface at Pine Castle and conditions absolutely ideal for the opening of the new season. There's no Tosh McKinley or John Robertson in that Hearts team, but John Cahoon is fit and he plays up front. And that's a powerful mixture of youth Celtic leave out Anton Rogan from their starting lineup so that Tommy Burns is at left back. He used his experience behind young Steve Fulton on the left side of midfield. Andy Walker joins Rogan on the bench. There's a first look at Jackie Dukanovsky, who's already endeared himself to the Celtic fans. He cost £600,000 from Legio Warsaw. He has 51 caps, a new character undoubtedly for the Scottish game. And Mike Gallow, who ironically plays his first competitive match for Celtic against his former club Hearts, who received £500,000 for the 24-year-old in the close season. And he's already had quite a reception from the Hearts fans. And the referee this afternoon, Mr. Douglas Hope from Erskine, one of our top referees, his first year on the FIFA list. There's always a special tingle on the first day of a new season, and there's no difference here at Tynecastle this afternoon. Tremendous atmosphere generated by this capacity crowd. And there was Muzumik going heavily into Roy Aiken in the first major challenge of the match. Aiken playing at centre-back alongside Derek White in the opening stages. Alan McLaren, the young Hearts fullback, challenged by McPherson, penalised by referee Douglas Hope. Hearts skipper clearly unhappy, he went behind Tommy Coyne and was arguing that he played the ball first. He's confessed to having a little bit of sympathy with the big defender on that occasion. Zubinovsky waits, stay played it in, there's the big striker! Good handling by Smith, but Dukanovsky left his marker. And each day popping up from the right. And a great effort there by Morris. The cross came from Galloway. But Celtic going to Morris forward to join the scare to the Celtic fans, but Pat Bonner was at his most alert. Nodding it down towards Fergus, they can be clear now away from Aiken and Morris. Well, the intention there was clear from Ian Ferguson. And you have to think, had that been on his right foot, he might have done better. Or two, but... Stop showing plenty of patience. Good play by Fulton, finding a gap inside the horse half. Finding it away from Kirkwood. fine play by Fulton was brought that ball about because you can see the way he screened the ball as he went forward he kept the ball on his left side which meant a tackle by David Kirkwood is almost inevitably going to produce a foul Roy Aiken is there Zikonovsky and Galloway very quite a state back this time and almost an own goal a relief there for Neil Berry and for the horse defence Bannon did well, there's Betty. Mozumik 
now on the attack. And it comes to meet it because I have the ball for a second. Well, now a referee help. He's given a free kick against the free kick. Followed by McPherson, waiting to next day. Here's White. Galloway helping it on its way to Morris. Good running by Morris. A great anticipation by Dave McPherson. Quinn doing some wandering now up front for Hearts. And an excellent tackle there by Roy Aiken. Kept his eye on the ball. Winning it cleanly and now up for the attack for Celtic, the early ball inside! Magnificent from Celtic and from Tommy Coyne! Roy Aiken celebrates as well he might, he was the creator of all this. 34 minutes on the clock, Tommy Coyne celebrates again. But there's a look here at the contribution made by Roy Aiken. It started with the tackle on John Cahoon on the halfway line. Winning possession there, sprinting forward to take the pass on the right. The slanted ball across the face of the goal. A nightmare for defenders, and Tommy Coyne is there. So 2-0 to Celtic, and what a bust that has been. Hearts will now require to draw all their fighting qualities to get back in this match. But always in the look of a match where the first goal would be very important indeed. Celtic snatch that, now they have a second. And the management team breathing more easily now. Galloway goes forward. Celtic fans jubilant now. And again doing well against Galloway in the air. Clyde and Ludwig, there's the layoff by Fergus to Mackay. It's an awkward deflection and excellent goal feeding by Bonner. On either side looking to give anything away in these 40 seconds. There goes the half-time whistle. The first half, a triumph for Tommy Coyne and something of a disaster for who's Drev Muzimic from Winstar Belgrade. He was the man who was spotted with that blatant push in Roy Aiken which gave Celtic the penalty kick on the half hour, taken well by Tommy Coyne. And then a sweeping move down the right by Celtic. Aiken's cross, Coyne's finish, making a half-time score and a healthy one for Celtic. The half-time, it's Hearts nil, Celtic 2. They've got task ahead. They've got to pull back these two goals scored by Tommy Coyne in the first half for Celtic, who began to look very impressive indeed as that first half wore on. And certainly well worthy of a lead. Although Hearts fans are under the field there, a two-goal difference with a little bit too much on the balance of play. Hearts certainly opening in impressive style but Celtic certainly finishing the first half looking much the better side. Zygonowski holding off Levine as he's promising again for Celtic. It is an accurate cross. Too high for Grant. Kirkwood turned to the side for the corner kick. This is good play again from Jiganowski over on the right. Look at the strength here. He holds off the challenge from Levine. Makes for the byline. Pulls over the cross, which Grant couldn't reach. Here's Paul McStay. Back from White. Away from Bannon. A point blank save from Henry Smith. Tommy Coyne was denied. Well, that was as close as Coyne could come to a hat trick without getting it. Look at the way McStay beat it. Bannon at the byline, pulled this back, a drilled first time left foot shot, and what a save it is from Henry to do that. We'll have to start making an impact up front. There's Ian Ferguson. Towards Berry. Scrambled away by White. Good free kick this, taken by Ian Ferguson into the path of Berry, who caused some consternation at the back for Celtic. Again by Derek White. Coyne stepping in to rob Ian Ferguson as this Fulton on the break. 
Here's Paul McStay now with a chance for Celtic. Coyne gets his hat-trick. 54 minutes gone. A superb goal from Celtic and Tommy Coyne gets his first hat-trick in Celtic colours. Well, a new hero is born for these Celtic fans. It really was superb football again right from the back from Celtic. It was Steve Goulden who came sprinting forward on the left, played the ball inside, McStay controlled it brilliantly, rolled forward through the inside right channel, held it up there for Coyne supporting him behind, and that deadly finish to leave Smith helpless. So 3-0 to Celtic, and surely now the points are safe. Dave McPherson goes forward, free kick given for the challenge on Ian Ferguson. Well, the task now looks to be beyond hearts, killing by those three Tommy Coyne goals. A uh, lot of the hearts fans clearly think the same. They're leaving the match already. But there are still 35 minutes to go. But the hearts fans, they're departing. Tiganovsky has gone off. He's done enough. On comes Andy Walker. Well, I don't suppose that'll be much consolation for hearts. Tiganovsky. Seems to be carrying a slight injury as he leaves. To the point truly now safe. And Andy Walker coming on will be very anxious to make an impact and retain his place in the side. Larry McKay turning it back on over the minute of Paul McStay. A great chance again for Celtic's fourth. Here's McStay. Inches wide. Paul McStay acknowledging his teammates inside. He tried to do it all by himself. Oh, I think it is. John Cahoon will take it. McPherson stayed up. There's McPherson, and this time it's in. Hart's first goal of the season. Bother is beaten. The captain, Dave McPherson, leading by example. Well, it's too late, I think, to make any significant difference to the outcome of the match. Five minutes only remaining. A straightforward goal, the corner kick from John Cahoon. McPherson using his height to get up with that powerful header and Bonner couldn't keep it out. Coyne helping it on towards Walker. Nice the chance for Fulton. Two minutes of stoppage time in this second half. There's McPherson. Cahoon's header brings the match to an end. Rather a sour note with tempers rising and players getting into trouble. It all became a little bit messy towards the end. But Tommy Coyne, the hero of the hour for Celtic, with a hat-trick, a penalty kick and a fine goal from close in the first half. And then an excellent shot from just inside the box in the second half. Coyne takes a salute of the Celtic fans. It's a comfortable win in the end. Celtic win the two points, it's Hearts 1, Celtic 3.